Hey everybody, this is Reverend Daniel Hickson again, and I'm doing another video about Bibles, about ways to really dig in and feast on the Word of God. I've done a video about different Bible translations, and I've done a video about study Bibles, and, um, and a video about devotional Bibles as well, where I kind of reviewed and encouraged people to check out uh, the C.S. Lewis Bible and the Ancient Modern Bible. Today I want to talk about reading the Bible as one big story. And if you grab a, a, a typical conventional Bible, you've got your books of the Old Testament, and then you've got your books of the New Testament, and uh, it's roughly chronological, but it's not really chronological. Uh, there are uh, prophets, for example, whose uh, stories you might read in uh, First or Second Kings, and then it's much later where you actually um, run into books uh, from that prophet or recounting the words of that prophet. Uh, and, and there might be many books of the Bible in between. And uh, certainly even within some books, like the book of Psalms, uh, there is probably a good 500 year span uh, between the oldest of the Psalms and the latest of the Psalms. So a lot happened, of course, in there that is then recorded in other books of the Bible. So if you just read a conventional Bible cover to cover, it can be a little confusing, it can be a little bewildering, because it's not exactly laid out chronologically. It's sort of chronological, it's sort of thematic, it's sort of by genre, the way that a typical Bible is organized. So, um, particularly, this is true in the Old Testament. Um, the New Testament is a little bit more of a chronological read-through, but still not perfectly so. Um, for example, you might read uh, the book of Acts and, and read about events at the very end of Paul's life and then go back and read some letters that Paul wrote much earlier in his life. So it's not exactly chronological if you read straight through it. So there have been attempts by Christians to produce a Bible that is chronological. And you read straight through from beginning to end. You get the whole big story of the Bible, the story of creation, the fall, the call of Abraham, the raising up of the people of Israel, the uh, sojourn in Egypt, the exodus, uh, the conquest of the promised land, the rise of the kingship, uh, the, the, the Babylonian captivity, the return from exile, and then you get to uh, Jesus Christ, the ministry of the Messiah of Israel, and the formation of the early church, and ultimately looking forward at the book of Revelation to the end of this age, the end of, of this world. Uh, that's kind of the big story of the Bible. That's the story that is summarized in extremely tight form in the ancient creeds of the church. And these two Bibles are laid out to try to allow you to read that story from start to finish, to read it chronologically, which uh, I think is a very helpful way to get to know that big story, the big story of the Bible. So what are these? Uh, this is, first of all, the story um, and then you see the subtitle, The Bible is One Continuing Story of God and His People. This is uh, selections from the New International Version. And this is the um, 2011 update of the NIV, New International Version. And what you get is it's 31 chapters that take you through the big story of the Bible. And uh, you, this is an abridged version, though. That's what I've got to emphasize. You've got um, blocks of biblical text... And then in italics, you've got uh, editorial comments that kind of connect the dots from what happened here uh, to get us then to what's going to happen next. And sometimes those editorial comments will summarize a great deal of, you know, several chapters of what happened. Uh, so you really are kind of getting the highlights. There are a few, a few pictures with uh, family trees and things. Um, and then every chapter will end with kind of... Um, some more of the editorial comments to smooth the way into the next chapter. And so uh, you do not get the whole, every verse, every word of the Bible if you read the story. And that's both, uh, I guess you could say, a drawback and a benefit. It's a drawback because you're not getting the entire Word of God, the full of the Bible, but it's also a benefit because this is a much easier way for a new beginner especially uh, who I want to know the Bible, I want to read the Bible, and I've tried, and it's hard, and I got bogged down in the book of Exodus three different times and never made it past there. Well, this is a, a good way to um, 
to get into reading the whole story of the Bible. Here you see is um, the beginning of the New Testament. There's a genealogy of Jesus, and the ministry of Jesus begins. Um, I think the birth of Christ is in, in the previous chapter. And there's a um, nice uh, transitional editorial comments between the Old Testament parts of the story and the New Testament parts of the story. So this is one that I recommend. I have... Um, in uh, both of the um, churches that I have served as pastor, both of the charges, we have read through this from start to finish with groups of mostly younger adults um, and mixed groups uh, as well. And it's just a great, great way to get people to familiarize themselves with the Bible and to feel more confident that they know kind of what's going on when they pick up a, a normal Bible. If they read a story or if they hear a Bible lesson in church from the lectionary, they can be more confident that they know where that falls within this bigger story of God and Israel. And of course, knowing where a passage fits in that bigger story is an important part of helping to understand it and interpret it. So uh, the story is a great resource. It's a great resource for Bible studies. It does have some pretty basic discussion questions uh, in the back. Um, I found leading small groups through this, and there's also a little dictionary. Uh, these discussion questions are so basic, I've had to um, supplement them quite a bit uh, when, when leading small groups through this. There's also uh, very helpful video introductions for every chapter. Um, and uh, those are pretty well done. Randy Frazee is um, one of the contributors to this. He does most of those video introductions, and he's kind of cheesy. Uh, he, he's kind of a geek, but, uh, but he does a good job, and um, certainly he helps you understand um, and does a good job introducing the story and bringing out some of the important themes and important questions of each chapter. So that's the story. If you want to read the, the big picture of the Bible from start to finish, chronologically, in an abridged form, this is a great tool to use to help you feast on the Word in that way. The other one that I want to point out, this is called the Daily Bible. I picked this up when I was in seminary. Um, the, the Daily Bible, there I think is also one called the Chronological Bible that's set out very similar. Um, and uh, there's the reading schedule. Um, what the Daily Bible does is uh, very similar. It lays out the entire Bible chronologically from start to finish, and it lays it out. You can see here's January 1st. It lays it out as a 365-day uh, January 1st to December 31st reading plan. So in that sense, this is a one-year Bible. There are lots of one-year Bibles in different translations, but what makes this one different is that it is laid out chronologically. So instead of reading a bit from the Old Testament every day and the New Testament every day, uh, you start in Genesis and you read all the way through to Revelation. Now, uh, this one is more exhaustive. It is not abridged the way the story is abridged, although there are things that are uh, left out of the Daily Bible. The story leaves out a lot of stuff that modern readers will find uh, especially perplexing or confusing or maybe just dull uh, and tries to kind of summarize those in the editorials um, to really help readers stay engaged. Uh, this, you are going to read the genealogies and you are going to read the dull stuff and, and you are going to read, or apparently dull stuff, uh, you are going to read some of the really violent stuff that's uh, really perplexing for modern readers. Um, the only stuff basically that's left out of this Bible is if you've got the same story that occurs more than once, right? So all four Gospels tell the feeding of the 5,000. All four Gospels tell the story of the crucifixion of Christ. There are places in the Old Testament books, 1st, um, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, where the same story uh, or the same event in, in the reign of a particular king gets narrated over again. There are even a couple of places in the book of Psalms where you have basically the same psalm repeated. And so this Bible uh, is, is only going to give you each of those stories or each of those psalms one time because it's going through chronologically, right? So the story of the crucifixion of Jesus might have snippets from all four Gospels, but it's going to be arranged to just tell that story the crucifixion from start to finish one time, not four times. So this, the Daily Bible, is slightly shorter 
than reading, and I don't know how many you know pages you, you end up shaving off of the total of the Bible, um, you know, maybe a hundred or something. It is slightly shorter than reading the Bible, conventional Bible start to finish. So it is slightly easier in that sense, but it's not abridged the way the story is abridged. This gives you the whole the whole shebang. Um, every passage or every story or every parable, it's all going to be in here. It's just not going to be duplicated when your conventional Bible does in fact duplicate those things. So um, that's, I think, the benefit. It also has these editorial comments um, as kind of a devotional reflection for every day because this is intended to be like a devotion Bible and sometimes those do provide just like in the story, they provide that kind of smoothing things out, helping the audience, the reader, to understand things, get some background that you might have missed, um, to make it a little bit easier to understand what you're reading. Um, but this is something that I really, uh, both of these Bibles I discovered when I was in seminary, but this whole idea of reading the big story of the Bible, and for any given passage, understanding where does that passage fit into the big story, I think is really important for understanding the Bible. And I do a lot of that in sermons, trying to give people the context. You know, is this before the, the Exodus or after, or before the Babylonian captivity or during or after? That makes a difference um, in, in where we are in that big story, how much of God's plan of redemption has so far unfolded, because it is an unfolding plan. The more you read, the more you learn about who God is and what he's up to. And so um, often we read the Bible just in isolated little, uh, you know, atomized bits in our devotion books. And that's fine um, as an introduction, and it's also fine once you already have the big picture of the story in your head. But it's so helpful if you want to really read the Bible for all it's worth to be able to, to see that big story. And that's why I recommend both of these products and others like it. You can also, I'm sure a simple Google search, if you type in uh, chronological uh, ordering of the Bible or chronological reading plan of the Bible, I'm sure there are just regular reading plans that uh, you could use with your conventional Bible and say, okay, this week I'm gonna read these chapters and then maybe next week I'm going to, or, or tomorrow, I'm going to skip to a whole different book to read what actually comes next chronologically. I'm sure there are reading plans like that available, though I've never used one. Uh, but I do recommend both of these products to help you get a sense of that big picture, that big story of the Bible. And then as you read individual passages or you hear them preached on Sunday mornings, you'll have a much better idea of where that fits in the big unfolding story of God's plans for redemption and salvation, the narrative of redemption. So that's all I've got for this video. Um, if you've got any other chronological reading plans or uh, reading tools that you really have used and liked, I'd love to hear about them uh, because as always with these videos I'm doing, I'm talking about stuff that's been helpful to me. There's so much out there for helping us dig into the Bible and feast on the Word that I don't even know about, so I'd love to hear about it. As always, until we connect again, may God bless you and keep you.